And welcome to the MMCast podcast. I am your host, Alex Kessler, here with my co-host, Ben Bateman. What's up, everybody? Here to talk to you with good energy, good vibes about oh. magic. Only good Gathering. vibes. We are today previewing, a special preview of a Time Spiral card. Not only just one, but three. Today is, uh, it's a red theme, where the, a bunch of content creators uh, have gotten awesome free previews from Wizards. Thank you, Wizard, for letting us be able to be a part of this. Um, and uh, I believe today we're really, there's just like a bunch of red cards coming out. We're releasing Time Spiral coming out remastered it's all of that block all sweet cards we have three cards we love we're going to go through each one uh, eventually getting to um the final one which is the one that will be able to be found impacts in an old border so uh, i believe the way this is working is there are cards from time spiral block included in the set but then each pack has a time shifted sheet that is an old border frame card and those can be from anywhere uh anywhere in magic so so um, I believe most of them, if not all of them, are specifically cards that have never shown up in Old Border, at least not in a pack. I might be wrong about that, um, but we are excited to show you them, so we're going to walk through three of them. Uh, at least two of these I have actively cast in Games of Modern. So these are modern. Two of the three cards are modern playable cards. The third one is a sweet card that, uh, honestly, I didn't even know the second half existed on this card. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about that as well. Um, but first... Uh, we want to thank our patrons. Thank you, patrons, for for being a part of making this podcast happen. Uh, we just recorded a 37-minute uh, movie conversation that is uh, exclusive to patrons for at least a limited time, if not forever, uh, that you can find on our Patreon. We talked about Star Wars and the Muppets and a bunch of other stuff. So if you got, if you want to hear me and Ben talk about movies, check that out. Patreon.com slash <laughs> uh, available for, I believe it's $5 and up as far as patrons go. Um, and we might be uh, figuring that one out. Uh, be a little bit different, but thank you so much. All our patrons. It's been great. Uh, and I hope you like the new content. Uh, and pinkies up. Would we, have, would we have fun talking about movies? I mean, like you and I mentioned this in the pre-show a little bit. Like, I mean, I know you and I spend a lot of our life talking about movies, but if we did a podcast together talking about movies, do you think if we tried to take that content seriously, we would just get into arguments too often because you're unwilling to ever admit that if you have an opinion, it is wrong. And I am so opinionated about movies. Do you think that we would like do you would boil over or do you think we would like have a good laugh? What is your opinion? I mean, we do it. I mean, we do it anyways. I think it would be, I think, I think, I don't think it would be problematic. I think people like the arguments. I think that is one of the reasons people come on to this podcast. We disagree on stuff here and I admit when I'm wrong, or at least I like do the side shift where if I'm not admitting I was wrong, I'm moving into a position where my wrong opinion I'm also judgmental of. And so I'm now on your side. I do like the casual sidestep to the, uh, the opposing team and make it feel like you had my opinion to begin with. Is the first movie we're going to talk about the movie heat. Cause I feel like that would be pretty, you know, I've never pretty seen necessary. it. So any opinion I have about that movie yeah. is like relatively <laughs> doesn't know, matter. You <laughs> like, Son I, of a there's gun. no way like a nineties shoot em up movie has better action than like 90% of anime. All right. So uh, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about preview cards. So our first preview card going through this, uh, well, I guess, I guess before we get into it, Ben, how, ex how hyped are you? You got to be hyped. I'm really hyped. So I was going to say, uh, I have actively cast all three of these cards. Uh, uh, two of them I have actively cast in modern. Um, one of them I've never played in a modern deck, but I have played in a Highlander Gauntlet deck, and I've had it played against me in Highlander Gauntlet as well. Um, so they're all actually unique cards, and we will talk about each one and why they're so cool. I'm pretty hyped. I mean, I think that this set is like, I'm so excited about this. It's I, I really, really, really wish on some level that this was coming out six months from now so that in-person magic was like a thing again. And I would be able to go and do that because I have not been able to play in-person magic with people or at a shop in a long time. And by the time that comes back, the set will not be uh, current anymore, but this is a great set that's going to be out there for when we go to magic fest and I do my chaos drafts as people. Cause now there is going to be a new time spiral set that you can get packs of for like a reasonable price mm -hmm. that we can throw into these chaos drafts. Cause the original time spiral packs are very expensive. And like I'll, I'll, I have like a closet filled with boxes of drafts that were eventually supposed to run. And I'll make sure to have some time spiral for, for future post COVID or at least post enough of us in the group having vaccines that someone doesn't have a vaccine can draft, I guess. I don't know. Whenever the, the Do future happens. you know that I happens. found seven like, sweet packs in when I was moving? No. Uh, that I was holding on to. I must have bought at the last event or something. I have like a, I have a dark steel pack, fifth dawn torment apocalypse. Uh, there's a, there's a modern masters pack in there. 
Um, I added a Commander Legends pack when I bought that box. There's one other in there, but okay. yeah, it's a sweet, yeah, it's a yeah. sweet set of packs. Uh, one, one thing I will say is, bef- uh, and, and then we're going to reveal this card. Uh, we are going to live stream uh, today. Uh, today is March the second. Us playing Modern, so we're going to do to Modern stream Twitch.tv slash Cast Wiley or uh, YouTube.com slash The MM Cast. And Ben is going to play a deck that has exactly what every one of the cards we're previewing today in it. And I'm going to play some classic Modern decks, and we're going to jam some games. So make sure to check that out. Uh, we'll be tweeting about it, of course. Uh, so uh, look for us at, at I said 3 p.m., right? 3 p.m.? 3 p.m. That's when we're the doing plan. It. PST. That's, that's in the calendar. It's in the calendar. 3 p.m. It says Ben and Alex play magic. <laughs> so twitch.tv slash Cast Wiley or uh, youtube.com slash Damon Cast. We'll jamming some modern. So uh, the first card. First card we're previewing. And, and, and Marshall's going to conveniently... Time Travel Media is going to provide it here in the middle of the screen. It is uh, cost zero mana. It's an instant. Uh, it's you're red. Leading, you're leading with this one, huh? At the beginning of your next upkeep, you have to pay four and a red. If you don't, you lose the game, uh, and you get to create a four-four red giant creature token at instant speed. It is Pact of the Titan. Uh, this is a big one. Yeah. It's a big one, yep. Alex. It's a big uh, one. This uh, the original set of Pacts was released in Future Sight, which was the third set of Time Spiral Block. It is my favorite set of all time. I remember playing at the Future Sight pre-release and opening a Pact of Negation in one of my packs. Um, obviously the green pact, uh, became a format defining card in modern, but the red pack, this is one of the ones that didn't see as much play. I would say the blue one is pretty close to format defining as well. Um, black has seen play white's the worst. This is the most interesting pact, um, as far as I think unexplored space and people have cast pact of the Titan. There's, there's a lot you can do with this card. Um, I have built several decks with it and I will be updating one of those deck lists into something new and cool that I can play against you, Alex. Um, next week on the stream but this card it's to, it, it's today on the stream we're recording this yes, a week ago are. but it's today that it's happening yes i will be updating uh that deck idea so that i can play it against you today on stream um which i'm very very excited about and you know hopefully blowing you out with lots of free four fours i mean look it's a zero mana instant speed four four alex what's not to love yeah no i mean like as soon as gideon came out i like have always kind of been obsessed with this card or just gideon's effect with the packs in general and this and the blue one are the best in that type of shell, Rob, like like of the packs, the green one's the strongest one in modern. I think that's like by I think a wide margin, and then it goes to the blue one, um, and then the black one has always been the like the middle ground. It's always it's never going to be better than it is, and it's always fine. The red one though is the one that has like the swingy pendulum of sometimes being the second best one if a, a deck like really works around it correctly to the worst one. Well, it's never the worst one. The white one's the worst one. So I'm apologize to whichever podcast got the white one. Everyone. <laughs> um, uh, but um, Pack of the Ten is always really really cool. And 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 once they print to Gideon, you know, had like a pretty terminal amount of cards that worked really well with packs and even like an arena i have a gideon tribal using the blue pact because it's on in historic historic deck um and just like there's enough cool effects with that that you can cancel out the you lose the game effect and modern gets even better one so like i think this card's really really cool i'm super stoked to see what you do with it um and and yeah pack, pack cycle in general is just generally one of my favorites uh, like Losing to a pact feels so bad generally, but it's always really funny. And like even doing the fun stuff like hive minding people. That that's like the really interesting thing you can do with the packs, and you can kind of have that built in as like a secondary sideboard option in any deck you build with them. Um, you know, it's a little expensive, obviously, to get up to hive mind because it does cost six, but um there's really there's cool stuff you can do. Like for instance, if you are planning on um you know, some sort of Angel's Grace or the type of thing that helps you not lose the game. Uh, Snapcaster Mage becomes a really, really fun card with uh, with Pact of the Titan. It's a card that I, I really like the interaction between those two. You know, for instance, if you're going to Angel's Grace on upkeep to respond to a trigger, you can like turn, you know, end of turn to uh, Pact of the Titan, Snapcaster Mage, flashback Pact of the Titan, upkeep, untap with 10 power, and then like Angel's Grace. And that's like really sweet. Oh, sure. <laughs> like yeah, cool yeah, yeah. That's do. sweet. Yep. And you like attack with 10. That's that's actually really cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm, that's I'm, like I'm, what my I'm old afraid. Leo deck I was doing kind of did. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably look and see what I can update with that. But yeah, there's really fun stuff. I mean, the packs are great. And it's also uh, it's just a very cool, very swingy sort of chaotic style of gameplay that I, I appreciate the design on these cards all these years later even more because I think that uh I mean, the blue one's a little bit annoying, obviously, having a free counter spell. But the downside in the blue one is so bad. Yeah, that's it's like very a, hard to pay for. I think that is the 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 most fair free counter spell, not ever printed, uh, ever printed. And when I say that, I mean fair, right? Because there's bad free counter spells. They're the ones that aren't good. I think like it's perfectly in the middle where like the, there is a real cost to it. And if you're able to negate that cost either by using it to win the game the moment you need it or to be able to combo with other cards to let you do it or just like ramp into the spell, then it's fine. So I think I think like the pack cycle has always been really interested for those reasons and 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 like all the different shenanigans. And for those who don't know how Hive Mind works, the Hive Mind combo is Hive Mind copies any spell you cast. So if you cast Hive Mind and then use any pact after it's in play, your opponent copies that pact no matter which one it is, and then they'll lose the game on their upkeep so it, it it gives them the the lose the game effect unless they have the mana to cast it but normally you try and pick one that's not in their colors or um you just do it before they have enough mana themselves and i think in a deck even if you're doing like something aggressive with like pack of the titan and you're just playing the blue packs because you're playing with cards that are good with it the Hive Mind, like as a sideboard game plan, is always really interesting for decks like against Jund or like decks that are much more about like long term whittling your resources down and you just need like a way to kill them and have a combo that kills them versus trying to like kind of be aggressive or or something that needs them to not have good removal for creatures. It's like the same reason you would be like Karanos in back in the day against when you were playing Twin against Jund, right? So it's like a really hard to deal with threat. Enchantments are hard to kill. And you have packs to protect it. And if you get it and you just automatically win and you're going to get to turn six against some decks in modern no matter what. And I think that's a, a valuable option. It's definitely a lot of fun to play with the two of them. And, and you know, when you mentioned like needing to be able to uh, throw a pact out there and like make your opponent die, you can also like pack to the Titan. And then if you have a pack of negation in hand, you can then pack the negation, the pack to the Titan, and it copies them both. So now your opponent's got to pay 10. They will almost assuredly lose. So so um, the other two cards I don't want to get into because they'll they'll work with the the what we've described so far and like blue, red and white. Sounds like the game plan you're going for. Have you thought of maybe doing a a, a, a different color than those three? Are you are you? We have to play red. Every card we have is red. So, have you thought of like red, white, black, and you get the removal spell versus the counter spell that maybe is a little bit better all the time, but then you don't get Snapcaster Mage, but you get like Mardu colors? Or have you thought of doing green where you get the the tutor where you can tutor for different effects? Uh, probably it's going to be the same colors I've played before. And their biggest reason is because blue allows you to obviously set up your draws to be a little stronger. Um, it gives you some counter magic to protect. And then also because one of the big things that you want to be doing in this deck, or at least the version I played before was like a uh, trick bind and like tails end type of effects mm -hmm. that you can obviously stop a spell, but you can also like stifle effectively a, a, a fetch, fetch land, land which or can give yeah. you enough of an advantage for your four, four to win. So there, I, that's kind of what I would lean into. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm going to explore it as I build this deck to figure okay. out what the other best thing to do is. So. Okay. All right. Now, second card preview today uh, is a split card. Yes. Uh, they're both, both sides are instants. Uh, this is the, the, the right side has the text return target creature. You don't control to its owner's hand on a mono red card, which I didn't realize that this card existed. I knew that at, at this moment in time, they were really into red getting bounced. There's the red, not buyback creature, the, the echo echo sting scourger. Yeah, the goblin, right? One in a red, two, two. From Planet Chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that bounces the creature. So they, they, they were like really trying with bounce being in red at this moment. And this this card is, uh, I'm just going to read it because it's not as, as uh, people don't, don't, this is a, a more of a deep cut of a card and it is dead and gone. Uh, it, dead is in a one red instant deal two damage to target creature. So not shock, but shock for a creature uh, instant. And then gone is two in a red return target creature you don't control to its owner's hand. What I think is cool about the card is that it it scales up, right? Like it it the red, the first half kills a lot of things. And when you can't kill it with the first half, you'll be able to eventually at least get it back into their hand and out of your way with the second half. Yeah, it's um it's a unique card because red doesn't have a lot of bounce that is playable. Um, so the reason that this card would get played in Highlander Gauntlet decks in our hundred card decks that we would play was because the Dark Depths combo runs pretty rampant in that format. And Blightsteel. 
Yeah, and Tinker Blade Steel. And so when you're in mono red, if you're in a mono red deck or or just a deck that relies very heavily on red, if you don't have strong answers, like in in those mono red decks, uh, having that card available to you can be actually kind of a lifesaver when you're trying to burn them out and you just randomly have a bounce spell because the you know the burn you the burn out an early creature half of it is totally relevant. It's a it's mo- most of the time it's, a, it's good. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, it's a unique card. It's the kind of card that if some combo like the one we're talking about was to get prominent in modern, I could see this card jumping into decks, into certain decks. But most of the decks don't rely entirely on mono red. They're willing to play other colors. So like that's where you'll see like Path to Exile would be played in, you know, uh, the the red white burn deck that they wouldn't really need this kind of a thing. Um, but it is interesting where this card is going to shine will be in the limited format in, in, in the time spiral limited format. This is definitely going to get the job. Right, right. And, and 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 just to apply it to modern, like this this optionality is always good. I don't think this is ever gonna scale much better, but this is obviously this is for limited. This is gonna be really cool in Time Star Block. I think this is pretty high pickable, right? Like this is premium removal almost always, um, in, in a limited format. So like obviously limited, great, great option. And then um cool and yeah, like in singleton formats for sure, where it like it like it in almost the best of one conversation, we talked about this with Glenn, right? We talked about where like they're much more into designing cards that have a best of one kind of focus at Wizards because of Arena, but also because of Commander, right? Both formats both are interested in this idea of like I don't get to sideboard, and this is a great version of that. I, you know, I I am able to always have options against what my opponents are doing, and that's that's why split cards are great. All right, last card, and this is the big one. And then we're going to talk about why we love Time Spiral. Uh, we have Old Border Frame. This is a one mana red creature. It's a human. It's a one two. It is. Uh, it has haste. Uh, it is also a monk, uh, and it also has prowess. It is Monastery Swift Spear in Old Border. Look at that original art. Gorgeous art by Steve Argyle. Uh, I love. I love this. I, I love this card. I love the old border framed. I love everything. And like, it goes with like other, other previews we saw. This card's going to be see play forever. It's one of the best aggressive red creatures ever printed. It's really, really, really good. Um, I love this one. I, not only do I love the card, but I also just love the old border printing. I think that's probably one of the coolest things that this set is offering. I love going back to the time spiral block. I mean, this is my favorite block ever. Future Sight's my favorite set ever. So it's, you know, this just gets me excited in general. But having the act having access to like an old border swift spear that I can just easily get uh from from a pack is so sweet. Because often those types of things are the kind of stuff that you, you know, you have to get as like a judge promo or something really yeah, specific. Yeah. My two of my favorite cards that I own are my judge promo swords the swords of fire yeah, and are fire so and, ice sick. and and uh, uh feast and famine and like i'm excited just to get more cool or old border cards i am as well and especially in foil too right oh yeah well and then, like and this is gonna and it's gonna have like i i i think they do they have the star i think they're gonna have that old style stuff so like just like love those old foils with the, with the you're talking about the shooting star yeah it's yeah, like, yeah the like shooting the star. star being able to like walk into a tournament playing like four monastery swift spear old border is gonna be so sweet i'm like really hyped and like there for sure we know there's like the old border path to exile is also being printed there's like other cool ones i'm like really hyped now that we know all three cards that I'm forcing you to put into the same deck, uh, how are you going to play these together? What's the game plan? Is it to play Monastery Swift Spear and then as many Pact of the Titans you can in one turn? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it's interesting. Like Monastery Swift Spear doesn't play in the style of the deck that I normally would want to play here. Because like I said, you need to cast Pact end of turn to get value out of it, to be able to attack the next turn and not lose. And you actually would want to do that on the turn you're attacking with Swift Spear, but uh, you don't. You, you can, can do you, it on. You, you can do it, it on your your main step. It's just they can remove the creature, right? That's you're you're not you're not any sorcery yes. speed removal. But like no one plays sorcery speed removal on turn two in modern. But you want to have open like in the version that like I would play, you'd want to have open like Tails End or like something like that to, re- to be reactive. Sure. Otherwise, like. So it's that kind of thing. But I'll have to figure out the balance of like exactly the best way to do it. Maybe it's more of a turbo build that is just like a little bit more red, white all in with like double strike or something like that. You know, who knows? I mean, I think there's definitely some there's definitely some interesting stuff that we could do. Uh, I want to look into I want to look into like ferocious and any of the for, like formidable, uh, which is the one that if you have a creature with power four or greater, it's is it ferocious. Yeah, ferocious. Then they, I look up they, there's, like, there's the counter spell that the, the spell pierce that's really good with with ferocious. 
Yeah, stubborn denial. Yeah. So I want to look into some of that stuff because I could see that being significant um, with getting a free 4-4. I mean, there's the, there's definitely some cool <laughs> stuff you can do. I think the reason we got these spoilers together, obviously, is to play more of a blitz version of the deck like you're talking. Um, we'll see. I have to look. I have to look over what I have available to me in my pool and find a good use for Dead Gone. Well, it's not. You're not playing limited. You have you have every card ever. I think you just. I think you just play Dead Gone as a because I'm forcing you to. <laughs> I don't think you as have a one to. of. I, I mean, I mean, yeah. at least Dead Gone can remove a blocker, yeah. right? It can. I mean, that's the it's fact good that the Titans want to get in for four. Like it's like it, it's it you can yeah you if you have a four four and you just need to get that last damage in you can get rid of something that's that's bigger you can use the shock to get rid of anything that's in your way on the way in with Swiss beer I think it's just like versatile enough that like playing as a one of I used to joke like I made that whole contest that if you could five zero a daily playing one noggle in modern I would like give you a foil of every single card sign <laughs> which I would still do if someone sent me a five zero on moto with every noggle like a single noggle in their deck. I would give I would find a foil copy of every single one of them and send it to as a reward, which no one's ever done. But like you could just play one of them, right? There's the one that like you draw two cards and discard a card at random as a two one for one. Or there's the one that if you have like there's like there's four of them and they're all like bad. But (laughs) maybe one of them is just like almost good enough to get through it. I saw someone try it with dredge, which I think is also cool because there's like drawing two cards and discarding a card at random is like fine in dredge. There's 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 a way. I have faith in eventually someone five owing a daily with the noggle. So I believe that you can f- beat m- me playing blue white control and junt uh, with dead gone. I believe in you, Ben. I mean, I'm gonna try. I feel like it, so it has to be in my main, or can I play one in the sideboard, or what? It has to be, it has the to be in the main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be in the main. All right, we'll play one in the main. I, I feel like it bounces for two mana. I feel like that alone is enough. And it either of the mana. stupid decks you're gonna play, either of the dumb decks you're gonna play that are gonna try to beat me, will probably have a wall of omens that you'll be happy to have me bounce. But maybe me bouncing it will be the, the difference of me winning and losing. So there's a lot of good tension. There's a lot of good tension there. <laughs> Just rest and then, and then I'll bounce your wall of omens, and I'll get you to two. But then I won't have any gas to win the game and you'll replay Wall of Omens and it'll be the most crushing Wall of Omens in my existence. I just need you to play like a white source into a blue source or like a red source into into a white source. He's like, yes, that is definitely what's going to happen. And I need you to like cast Angel's Grace and I need to remand the Angel's Grace to your hand and then you just lose to the pack triggers. (laughs) You can't remand an Angel's Grace. Oh, does that split second? Nice. Okay. It has split second. Damn. That's the sick part. That's why that's why it's can you you counter a split second with a morph creature? Uh, no. Because morph creatures because don't use the stack. You just don't have priority until the spell has resolved. Okay, okay, okay. Um, That's the thing. The spell has to resolve before priority is passed. That's how a split second works. Got it. Which is, which is a long time ago, Eric Wydetz and I did like a list of the 10 most powerful mechanics in magic history. And I think we put split second at like number one or two. And the, it's funny because... It's not because the cards that hey they printed split second on aren't, but as a mechanic, it actually is because it it, it just wholly invalidates the way that magic is designed. It's just not on any cards that are quite good enough to don't, actually I don't, matter. I don't think it's in the top ten. Like uh, if it like, was on like what what if it was on like an epically good card? Like if there was like a the, the card, card as good the as epically Lightning good Bolt card is second. a good card. I think if Lightning Bolt had split second, it would be better than Lightning Bolt which is one of the best cards ever printed, but that's because it's lightning bolt, not because of split second. I don't think like, like we're talking what if, what, dredge and storm and like, there are pound for pound, like broke, like they can't print storm cards ever again because the bad ones are break the game. <laughs> they can't print like, like even the don't green think if, life gain storm card was good in modern <laughs> that they printed you don't think in modern that if, horizons. Like, you don't think that if like, if like you know, remand had split second or something, it would be like the. It'd be just good. Like, it would be better than remand. Like like it. Yes, if you print any good card that is in a top hundred card ever printed conversation, and you gave it split second, that card is better now. That doesn't mean split second is the reason it's the best card ever printed. It's just like if you gave remand dredge one, it would be better. If you gave remand buyback 17, it would be better than remand regular, right? Like it doesn't. And buyback 17 isn't a thing that will ever be used, but like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would put split second. I think, I mean, look, I, you understand why, why I say it. I don't know if I stick to that opinion. Now it was a very kind of a naive opinion. I think in a vacuum, we were talking about it because of the way that it breaks magic design 
which it, it's one of the few things I can think of that they've ever done that is sort of like you have been trained your whole life to play in this one particular way. It's the way that a smart magic player plays, which is that you you save all your mana, you play reactively, you like keep cards in your hand, you you essentially interact when you need to interact and otherwise you don't. You try to keep as many resources as you can. That's like that's the way that you're trained to do it. So split second is this weird one little niche corner case they designed that that tells you that that's wrong. And and you're and that yeah. and that thing you're planning to do doesn't work. It's definitely powerful. I guess I guess my point is is it's like really finicky. It 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 it's yeah. actually only relevant to like in magic history, a subset of some of the better cards in magic, but really most cards do not care about split second. You could have an entire block have split second cards, and it would just invalidate like counter spells in standard, which are normally not that good anyways. Right? Right. So it's like that's kind of why I'm saying I don't even think it's in the top 10 is just like the like counter magic doesn't matter in most formats to a degree that the game is altered. It's bad for players. Like I understand Ben, why you hate split second <laughs> because you like playing decks that are running counter magic to protect your threats and split second allows them to kill your threats while ignoring that counter magic that I understand. Uh, but I don't think it is like, I, I don't think that play style is, is even 15% or maybe it's 25 at best. It's 25% of magic is counter spell based that's, magic. And that's being very uh, generous. That, that's, that's ridiculous. It's an easily for uh, of, of good players that play the game the right way. It's easily 82%. He's 2% of good players <laughs> that play it the right way. Like ramp players that have been dominating every format for the last two years don't count my favorite thing uh, my favorite thing is when we were playing when we were playing uh our our game with with tappy and jason and you played a crucible of worlds and we're getting value out of lands i was just like in your blue white deck that's like, been there forever of course yeah i i, I feel like that's it's <laughs> you do it in every single deck you, I did you, like, first. you literally you have you have things that you do and you love doing and you do them all the time and they're the same i have the things i do that i love doing but it is funny to me that as magic players we lean into those things my sort of my blue white commander deck is the one deck i have that is all foil i have every foil fetch land in that deck including and then on top of that i have strip mine ghost quarter waste no, i don't have wasteland because foil wastelands are insane uh i have two of those <laughs> um and why would i not play with crucible worlds that's and that's just those cards. Great it card. doesn't even take into uh, a, a consideration the fact that I'm playing, uh, uh, not bizarre trader. What's the what's the the land that you gain one life if you have metal craft and then you can sacrifice it for four to find any artifact oh, in your uh, deck? Uh, Inventor's fair. Inventor's fair. So I have Inventor's fair in the deck. Like the deck's game plan at one point was to get expedition map with a trinket mage. Use that expedition map to get academy ruins then sacrifice the ex put it, that expedition map back on top of the deck use that expedition map to go get inventor's fair then use that inventor's fair to go get crucible world to start looping your crucible world and your inventor's fair <laughs> to get every artifact you wanted the deck including mind slaver to eventually kill your opponent with academy ruins this is a normal that was the that was when it was geist of saint traft at least and when Mind Slaver. Looping Mind Slaver was a thing you could do because we weren't living in, in in streaming magic. That was like the main game plan. Geist's main game plan was to kill one person with Geist of St. Traft and one person with with uh, uh, the combo bot and then kill the other person using the combo to kill that other person. That was like the game plan. It's a new deck. I mean, right. Now it's Neombi now. Um, it's, Question for you. Yes. Top three favorite Alex Kessler lands all time in magic. Uh, my top three lands in magic of all time. Yeah. I mean, I want to know your top three so lands Academy Ruins because is I really high. I know you love that. If I, I was going to guess, if I had to guess, I would have put Academy Ruins in the top three for sure. A Celestial Colonnade is probably also really high. I think I would have guessed that too. Um, so what is my third? And, and I don't want to put a fetch land. I think that's boring. Um, feel like i would say on as a general concept cycling lands would be your third favorite <sighs> one mana cycling lands those are really good oh, oh oh no 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 i know what it is i'm sorry i take that back Teleria west is your third favorite land 
Also love Tulare West. Also in that Geist deck. That's an, an alternative option to <laughs> the expedition map. Uh, Tulare West would have been in my guess for number one. I would have, I would have guessed that pretty high. Yeah, I think those are the three. I think it's Academy Ruins, Tulare West, and Celestial Colonnade. And my first my first modern PTQ, I played all three of those in the same deck. And he's like, and he's like, you know, it's only twenty five percent that plays, you know, blue counterspelly type of stuff. Yeah, says the guy whose favorite lands are all blue lands. Yeah, uh, but one of them is <laughs> I can, one of them I can only use at sorcery speed. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I'm not saying I don't love that. We are friends. We like similar styles of decks. I just like I don't I don't I don't think games played in Magic counter based Magic decks are twenty. I think that is less than twenty five percent. What are your top I think the your sweetest lands? thing about well, the sweetest thing about this, just as a, as a side mm-hmm. note, is that two of those three lands are from Time Spiral Block. One of them is originally from Time Spiral. Oh, yeah. The other one is from Future Sight. So, right. just a strong indicator of just how sick. I think. I think like uh, other lands, is. other lands that are up there, Urborg, Urborg, I like really Urborg love. Really I like good. love Urborg. Yeah. Uh, I'm never going to say it correctly, but I love that. Um, I love High Market. A Market's lot. Great. Uh, Maze of Ith Market's great. Is a big. I'm a big fan Maze of Maze of Ith. Is a top three for me. Yeah. Maze is top three. Um, uh, I really see. love Thawing Glaciers. Yeah, card doesn't do it for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Those who don't know Thawing Glaciers is uh, comes to play tapped. If you know Maze's End, it's the better version of that card. It's a uh, one. It comes to play tapped. Uh, it doesn't tap for mana, but you can tap it and pay one to search your library for a land and put it in the play tapped, and then you return it to your hand at the end at the end of your turn during the cleanup step. Um, and you can do cool stuff with it. Uh, which like I'm really close to making Obeka, which is like just taking like Kest deck and making it into an Obeka deck. But yes, um, other lands. My favorite lands are Maze of Ith. Um, if we can't use just cycles of like basic, like normal, like dual lands, yeah, shotguns, I think, whatever. I think, then... uh, 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 these are ability lands. Ooh, uh, ability. Gavity Township is also up there for me. But sorry, continue. <laughs> Do it for me as hard. Uh, there's because a it's few. Not blue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a creature land that I like more than Mute of All. Um, Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, 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 God, I love Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, Ink Moth is for sure top three. So it's Ink Moth, Maze of Ith, and I think it might be. Um, I think it might be Fairy Conclave. Um, okay. Okay. I'd be Fairy Conclave. That's sweet. I, I've played Fairy Conclave a lot. It's slow, but having a 2 1 flyer on my land is so sweet it's a two one flyer for two your favorite t- card it's my type. favorite thing in the world and i get it on a land <laughs> which is the only thing about that card that's fallen out of favor for me a little bit is that it's it, i don't like as much uh that it has that it comes into play tapped i've kind of i've kind of come off of it a little bit one card that i really like that i've gotten like a lot of use out of is barbarian ring the shock it's the threshold land you can sacrifice for a red and tap to shock oh sure uh, okay and it come and, it, and for if it has threshold, but it's just it's untapped red source painland. Um, I've played that in like sacrifice to deal damage type of decks that loop lands a bunch. I mean, that's yeah. I was gonna say strip mine is like pretty great. I, I think strip <laughs> pretty, mine is lower than ghost quarter to me, and and partially from a like on both ends, right? Like I think ghost quarter is the the best version of that effect. Right, like it, it for magic yeah. to exist, right? Like I think that strip mine is awesome and super powerful, but also miserable to play against. So like I'm I'm never sad to see a ghost quarter against me, but it also is a very serviceable tool that does cool stuff. And the fact that you can like use ghost quarter to target your own land, like you can target your indestructible land, the indestructible artifact land, which also really good land to like ramp yourself if you have a ghost quarter like which was another thing that i'm doing in that geist deck uh which is now niabi all these things are still happening in the deck it's just no longer playing mind slaver or geist caracas love caracas ancient tomb ancient tomb uh, also um, caracas is banned in all the formats that i can afford to play yeah so. i've talked about a lot of non-modern lands uh for yeah i think i think you can't play caracas in commander right it's banned sadly it's 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 my joking answer to which card on the ban list should come off partially because I know it never will because it just like is above the power level that they want cards to come off of. But I think it is by being mono white. It's like giving white that like power jump. And uh, I don't think any card on the ban list currently needs to come off. I think all the cards that are on there are fine to stay on there. But Caracas being the one that come off is silly. And I love it. We talked about it on Sheep and Spot. Oh, that's something to talk about. Uh, I was on um, uh, Casual Magic with uh, Sheep and Bot. Uh, 
this last week. So everyone should check that out as well. We did a whole conversation on like the early days of casual content creation. So, um, cause he's very focused on casual. He's on the CAG, um, the commander advisory group and, 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 and has a casual focus podcast and was a commander podcaster for a while. Um, and then, uh, me and Ben got started in magic content creation with top decking, which was like a casual, not about strategy show. And that was in an era where like 99.9% of magic content creation was um, like pros making pro videos, right? It was, it was like Patrick Chapin and LSV doing draft videos on Moto or writing strategy articles on, on, on star city games.com. And so like, we were like early days, before even the command zone was out there doing stuff like making content that was like for people that don't want to win a tournament, want to have fun. That eventually became the MM cast in the masters of modern, which was like the competitive magic version side of the command zone for so long. But even then, like our podcast has always been about like, how do you have fun in modern? Right? Like we, we've never been like, we, you, this is the only like we only talk about the best top tier strategies because that's not fun. I don't think our <laughs> listeners want to listen to us just like hate on cards. They want to hear us be like, how do we make Pact of the Titan work? And I want to talk about how good Pendlehaven is. You know, Pendlehaven. Pendlehaven is is uh, it is a good card. Yeah, it gives true. creatures. Right, I want to talk about how good Gargoyle Castle is. You want to talk about how good Gargoyle Castle is? <laughs> I've looked. Not it. really. Okay. I'm- <laughs> you got a crucible in play you got a three four every turn except now you could just get that card without there's they printed a new one that's better right recently yes you knowing what a gargoyle castle is offhand is is excellent that's fantastic it's a, for those who don't know it's a colorless land that uh you may sacrifice it for some way too much mana to get a three four flying gargoyle token it's five mana and you have to tap Something it like, yeah that sounds right it's pretty it's pretty <laughs> hefty it's a it's a hefty tool you can tap it for colorless. Uh, so, so okay. So, question: Fairy Conclave. Could they print? And I, for some reason, we're talking about lands uh, today, which I don't hate. Uh, could they print a colorless? And there's the battlefield untapped. Taps for colorless for two mana becomes a two one flyer. Not with changeling. Not with changeling. Just it's a it's a it's a it's like a weird creature type. It's some it's like a salamander. <laughs> so it's like basically some it's like a hybrid between it's this hybrid between Mutaval and Fairy Conclave. The difference being it doesn't generate or cost blue mana comes in untapped and isn't a changeling. That's that's the that's the um they could print it. It I think it runs the risk of being a little bit good. Uh and I think only because it comes Blood in Mock untapped. Nexus exists, right? Like and that 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 is a flying one one for one, and you can tap another one to make it a two two. So so it has like a weird pump ability. Yeah, and, it, and it becomes an artifact. So it's, it's, you're probably right. I guess I guess it just feels like having to getting an extra power uh in the air without having to use like another land feels yeah i mean I, no i to answer your question i think thinking about it now they, they could print that in, in a heartbeat that's yeah, not I, too good i think it'd be good i think it, it'd be playable but i don't think it'd be i think it's worth oh, it cost two to one activate access. not one to activate yeah oh that's that's not even good that's that's they would print it that's fine what if it what if it costs one to activate but didn't have changeling it was like a bad creature type so it was the same thing as mutavault except it doesn't have changeling it's a two one but it flies i think that is too good okay I think I think I think it has to cost two mana. I think that's still really good. I think that sees play. I think that sees more play than Mutavault does now. Because it has evasion. It's it has evasion. Power. You can just put it in any deck. Like like and and it comes to play untapped, right? The cost of the colorless producing land you lose for the untapped. I think it sees play in modern. I just don't think it's like problematic. I think it's a fine right. card that's cool. Because most removal spells kill it. Um I think it's just like a sweet card. Uh, yeah, like it, it's it's comparable. To, like um, like Ink Moth Nexus is really similar, right? Because Ink Moth Nexus is ostensibly a one-one double strike for one, in infect decks especially. So this is like yeah, and it flies, and Ink Moth flies. I mean, yeah, it's comparable. That's that's a fair point, right? Like, so I think if, if a two mana for a two-one flyer, you could probably even give it a relevant creature type. It could probably be creature type fairy or creature type uh spirit with rogue or something or rogue. That'd be cool. Yeah, uh, it has to fly on purpose so rogue's a little weird vampire that would be dope i would bear that it's colorless but it would be cool rogue's fly on purpose. Oh, it could rogue's just be a thopter, purpose. right it could just be a thopter new yeah but then it's artifact then it's weird Ooh. and it kind of plays in the space of yeah like spirit mob, like, mob. spirit spirit plays in the like it could be like an ugin themed car right like ugin's ugin's egg 
<laughs> yeah, Ugin's creation. Ugin's. Well, it's a land, right? It's like Ugin's defenses. Ooh, U- Ugin's gargoyle. <laughs> it's, it's a colorless gargoyle spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Ugin's, like, yeah, U- U- Ugin's, a, like a Ugin's. little Ugin statue on top of whatever Ugin, the Eye of Ugin, which is now a castle. <laughs> Something like that. There's a lot of flavor. I know, we're all, I know we're all over the place today, but you and I talked about this when we were in Germany or last year, some years ago, whenever that was. Uh, and I queued up the other. This is completely unrelated. So we're just off on a tangent now. Um, okay, well, uh, I queued before, up the other I, day. I, I do have another thing I do want to talk about before we finish. Okay, so okay, 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 uh, yeah. uh, uh, we are at 120. Uh, because because we are going to time. This is our Time Spiral Block preview card. We haven't seen any most of the previews we haven't seen yet, so we don't know what's going on. But I do want to talk about original Time Spiral Block because I I didn't actually I've never played it. Uh, one of the reasons I'm excited is like I love so many cards from this block from Tarmogoyf to Telerio West to Academy Ruins. Like literally, we listed my top three favorite cards, and two of them are from this or lands, and and two of them are from this set. Um, so I, I, I want to kind of define what that block was, especially for listeners that weren't playing back then. And, and there's a lot of content coming out right now about it. So, so it might be a little redundant, but I think it'll be cool from our perspective, what we remember it as, and then get a little bit from you, um, kind of like what it was like playing. What was your favorite draft archetypes from it? Uh, and, 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 and what that, what it looks like and, and how you remember that, that block now. Um, so first what is time spot block? So time spot block was, was the set right after Ravnica. Yes. Right. Yep. Right after so Africa, right before, right before Lorwyn block. Um, and it was like the first hit they did in nostalgia block. In fact, modern horizons one was like, their like them doing time spiral two. modern horizons was literally pitched as time spiral two. like in, in the pitch meeting for the set. They're like, we want it to be a bunch of throwback spells. We want to bring it back as many mechanics as possible. We want a bunch of references to old stuff. That's what Modern Horizons was, and Time Spiral was that. But it was set over three sets, and the three sets played in uh, the past, the pre- uh, alternate present, and the future. And so the first set had a uh, a time-shifted sheet of a bunch of reprinted cards that were from older sets. That's what they're doing now. So there's going to be, like, uh, uh, our, you know, that's where... where um, Monetary Swift Sphere, our, our preview card. Uh, uh, that's why it has old border. There's a bunch of other old border cards in the set. And that's what the original one had. So that's why they're... And then in Modern, that's why there's like weird old cards in Modern. That's that's where those cards came from. Um, then in the second set, there was the alternate universe cards. And those were cards that were classic famous abilities, but on a different color. So that's where Damnation came from. And, and classically, this is maybe Wizard's least favorite set ever printed that's not totally true but what it, it's on a top list of sets they wish they didn't do because it broke the rules with color pie so many ways that people keep using as examples of like oh no black definitely can destroy all creatures for four mana which it can like that's maybe a bad example what's a good example of a color shifted card that Sun, people get Sunlance is like a card that's like why does white have three damage to a creature yeah like they started i mean and then they leaned into it more but it's always now it always has the condition of attacking or blocking uh it's funny because a lot of the stuff that they did actually with the color shifting has now become a little bit more standard within those colors so like brute strength for instance which was red giant growth red just gets giant growth kind of effects now often it gets them kind of in most sets like like Um, harmonize is a good example though right like harmonize is one like green is not supposed to get just draw three cards for four correct yeah uh mana tithe is a good example of a card that they like wouldn't print now, uh, like white isn't supposed to get mana drain or, or, or isn't supposed to get force like, spike. attack force spike, but force spike in white was what they printed. So, yeah, so it's a set where like there's a bunch of like weird harkbacks to alternate versions of the, the present. And so like even some of the characters are like if this character was evil in the original set or if they didn't become evil uh, in the original set way back. Yeah, in the day. well, there's also there's also so time spiral one and has. And all three of them really have a lot of this cool nostalgia stuff where they throw back to old uh, character names and they throw back to a lot of like characters from the original sets in a way that I think the nostalgia is really cool, but a lot of the cards are really bad. So if you go look at a lot of the legends from the set, most of them are not really pushed in a way that makes them so so like if High Arcanist or like uh, some of the other ones from that, like a, that initial look who's set. A, look who's a time shifted card. Like some of them yeah, are right. broken, like on the other hand, <laughs> where some of them are right. bad. Some of the cards from this set are like, oh, <laughs> so then you get into like Mishra um, Artificer's Prodigy, which is a card I really, really liked. 
Um, and then, and then in, you know, you had the, you had those grandeur cards, the five legends from future site that I've talked about Lanessa's Ephraimage on here a bunch, but they're all the legends that if you had a second copy of that legend in your hand, you could discard that second copy while the first one was in play for some effect. Mm -hmm. Um, so they tried some cool stuff out. There's some stuff in here. That's really, really fun. It was also Um, the set that had all of the alternate, uh, legendary dragons. So like. They had Numat yes. and 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 for a while, this was the only commanders that were available in enemy co- in in the wedges, right? Like the only way you could play a uh, Abzan commander deck was if you play with Tineb. It was like the only option available to you, and like all of those dragon. And that's my first commander deck was Tineb. It was from this set, so I've 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 got some roots in the time spiral block era. And then the third set that was the future, and that's probably the coolest one. It it to date had. I believe it still has the record for most named mechanics in a single set. 37 or something. Yeah, it's like an insane number. And the reason was because they each pack had a bunch of new uh, future framed cards. And it was like all of the different ideas that Mark Rosewater and the design team at that point had on like mistakes they maybe made with the frame or things that they would do sim- different. So they had symbols for each of the card types and the converted mana cost was on the other side of the card. Cause they realized when you fan your cards out, that's the thing that matters. So they put it on the other side. So they did all this weird stuff with like the frame to make it look really sci-fi and different. And then they like, they came up with a bunch of mechanics that could show up in the future. Many have now shown up. They came up with like Tarmogoyf is in that old frame originally and Tarmogoyf. You, you like, have, you also have, there there was a cycle of lands from that original set that uh, included five different ones. And now to date, two of those five have now shown up and had full cycles. The first of which was Graven Cairns showed up there. And, and a few years later, not just, just a couple of years later, maybe within a year, no, 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 Graven, uh, Graven, you had the, Sorry, Graven Cairns came literally the next year because it, it, there was a few Future Sight cards that were specifically from Lorowin Block that they knew were coming out that they just put into Future Sight to like play with okay. the game. But so you had Graven Cairns, you had Horizon Canopy, which then eventually in Modern Horizons actually got the rest of the cycle. Five of the cycle. We don't have the four remaining allied Horizon lands. Yes, yes. They, they gave us they gave us a full uh, five of them. Though. They we gave got us five enemy ones, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll get the rest of the Horizon Lands because I think those are pretty beloved. Um, but yeah, it's it's and then what I was going to say with Tarmogoyf, like Tarmogoyf was the first time anyone had ever seen the word Planeswalker on a card because they or knew tribal that, or tr- yeah, both. Yeah, tribal and Planeswalker. So when it came out, that's why it was kind of like, oh, this card's not very good is because like two of the card types didn't exist and they never knew if it would exist. So it was like at best a six, seven, which ended up still being good. And that's like one of the famous cards people would like. Oh yeah, here's this Tarmogoyf. Give me that bad card. I don't care about. It. And then like three weeks later, yeah. it was a fifty dollar card. That story. Like so, there's all this like really cool stuff there. That's uh, that they made references to. Some of it were mechanics they knew were coming. So the next two sets had them in. There was a bunch of Lorwyn and Shadowmore cards. Um, and then some stuff was stuff that just like is never going to exist. Like Sliver cycling and Wizard cycling and uh, Fate Seal, which is a mechanic that will just never exist. Or so many of those weird, but so many of those weird mechanics and weird cards are cards that I have tried using and have used like over the years in decks. Like, like wizard cycling is like a definitely something I've used a bunch. Oh yeah. Uh, I've tried that. I've tried to use that card a whole bunch of different times. Vidalcan Aether Mage is the card that has it. Um, there's, there's a lot of weird cards in there. There's also like all these abilities that never got used, like Gravestorm. Um, yep. was was one that was cool and and you cool. had like this one card called a uh, flesh grafter that had an ability called transfigure which is a lot like transmute except that it's when the creature is on the battlefield same same exact deal um where you could sacrifice it for an ability of of three so black black one on this card it was a four a three three for four i think and you could sacrifice it and search your library for another creature i think with I think it was with equal power and toughness, but it might have been the same converted mana cost. I can't quite remember, but it's like a slow tutor. Um, you know, they tried a bunch of weird stuff in oh, there. Like, uh, like fortifications, which were equipment yes. for lands. Like we have vehicles and equipment, and this is equipment for land. And I had, I did like a thread on Twitter. Maybe I'll link if I can like find this, I'll link to it in this uh, in this episode on like all of the different because they like the the fortifications has never seen any more printing because they like can't think of any other ideas for it, apparently. (laughs) And I came up with the whole thread of like all the different fortifications I made if I could make because I think fortification is a cool mechanic. There's like a lot of cool untapped potential still that just like for different reasons hasn't worked. They also tried like. You know, news they they did like cycling, but you sacrifice a land, or they did cycling where you pay two life, right? They did like weird free cycling costs in this set. Was like the first time they did that. Oh, yeah, Edge of Autumn. It's like one. Of my, that's another one of my favorite cards. I, I, man, do do I love do I love Future Sight? I love it more than anything. And there's like weird stuff. Narcomoeba 
which like eventually got printed yeah. on, on in Ravnica, but like you have to a self mill set had to be a thing that existed at the time, or like Logic not with Delve, right? There was like the first three Delve cards were from Future Set, and eventually they came out in Cons. But the the, the point is that they're just like it, it was such an experimentally cool set where they just came up with wild ideas, and it's the one thing I do hope that happens in Modern Horizons two. Right. If Modern Horizon 1 was supposed to be Time Spiral 2, I hope Modern Horizons 2 is Future Sight 2, right? Where they're yeah. just like, here's the future. I mean, I like, because the, the problem is I don't think it'll be time. I don't think it'll be Planar Chaos 2 or whatever. It's not Planar Chaos. What's the second one called? Yeah, Planar Chaos. Yeah, Planar. I don't think it'll be Planar Chaos 2 because of what we said, the alternate universe issue. And or, or it is, and they figured out a new solution where like maybe they go to a bunch of worlds like, uh, Tarkir, where like dragons of Tarkir is gone, but they could go to regular Tarkir, or like what does Dominaria look like if they hadn't destroyed the planet, or if the Eldrazi won, what does Zendikar look like? But I think that like more likely it's going to be uh, not more likely. I hope, I hope it's Future Sight too. Future Sight is so dope. Like I didn't even get to play it at the time, but that's one of the reasons I'm excited about Time Spiral remastered. But like, and that's where the packs are from, right? Packs are another. Packs were based off of. Uh, supersonic slug or something. It was an unglued card, um, or an unhinged card. I'm gonna look it up, um, really quickly. Or Marshall brought it up using the power of editing. Um, d -d 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 rocket powered yes. turbo slug, which is a three one for three in a red three one super haste. This may attack the turn before you play it. You may put this card into play from your hand, tapped and attacking during your declare attacker step. If you do, you lose the game at the end of your next turn unless you play this card's mana cost during that turn. So you get to play this a turn, and that's where the pack came from. Literally, literally, Pact of the Titan is rocket powered turbo slug made in white border or in black border. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's the same. It's the same idea. It's very close to it. Um, One of the, and, like uh, they've, and they've yeah. said on record that they based the pact cycle off of this card, like and and, and that yeah. they, that that pact of the time started as basically rocket powered turbo slug with this technology, and then it evolved because like oh this could be a four four because the three one's bad and it's a rare and there's a rare cycle. So, um, but yeah, I think I think like just like all of the mind power of what's possible being put into. Time Spiral Block like kind of rewrote Magic's future in a lot of ways. And on part like Future Sight being a joke. The thing I'm the most excited for is Suspend. <laughs> I'm hoping it's coming back. I'm assuming it is. Uh, we none of our three cards reference Suspend, but I have to imagine it is. Yeah, it was such yeah, a yeah. huge part of Time Spiral Block. Um, and in all of the blocks, like the whole Suspend thing, uh, it's it's one of those things I think for me that I just played during that time. And I really liked the idea of suspend it appealed to me. And mm -hmm. so it always has, and I've always wanted to go back to it. I think it's a complicated mechanic for a lot of players. And I think a lot of players actually don't like it. Um, but I don't know. I mean, maybe they've made over the years, they've, they've introduced so many complicated mechanics now that maybe they look at it now and they're just like, eh, it's the same as any other complicated mechanic. I mean, do you like suspend? Are you a fan? I love suspend. I think it's really, really, really cool. It's very complicated. And like, there's like a weird baggage on the fact that like creatures have haste when they enter play, but like, it's really sweet. I love, I've always loved suspend even before. Like I got real nostalgic for this set. Uh, and, and it was like one of the key features to modern horizons. One, not modern horizons. One modern masters. One draft, yeah. right? It was like, and, and with that kind of said, I think, and, and this is going to be a moment where I'm going to say a sentence and hopefully it'll be the name of the episode, especially if this is split off as its second, its own video. Um, or even if it's like time spot remastered preview and, uh, and then this will be the title time. I, I'm going to say time spiral block is the most influential magic block in modern history to modern. And I think by like a wide margin. I think Time Spiral Block is one of the most influential blocks in, in Magic history. I mean, sure. I think pretty pretty easily. I think it's it's so beloved like by so podcast. many players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're like a modern podcast. And, and yes, it is beloved. But I think like it's such a touch point for everything. But like it, it, I think it affected modern in a way differently than the rest of Magic. Obviously influential in Magic, right? In, in the same ways it's influential for modern. But the fact that Modern Masters 1 in many ways was a retelling of Time Spiral Block cards, the fact that it had Suspend and Fungus and all of these different draft strategies that were a part of that Time Spiral Block. And in many ways, it was kind of like a reprinting of that set. 
the fact that Modern Horizons 1 started as Time Spiral Block 2 within its creation and eventually be, like got that extra modern bump to make it like more popular at the time because they were worried about Time Spiral 2. Even the fact that Time Spiral 2 Block is coming out or Time Spiral reprinted Masters coming out now kind of at a moment where like modern was in a bad place because of COVID and everything and might be making a big comeback going into this year. I think that, and then just like all the ways it's influenced the way it's like every, cause like basically since where I would say almost pioneer started, I think that's when time spirals effect on magic started dissipating, right? Like that's when you stop, right? Like, what delve came out in cons. And then there hasn't been that many mechanics from that era that they hadn't gotten to yet. There, most of the stuff that like the color pie messed with has been either adopted at this point or won't be adopted. And so it feels or, or more like outclassed in like what they did. Like right. there's very few cards back then that broke the color pie that are, so good that they like there's a lot of interesting rats that are not white four drops so damnation is really cool but most colors have really great access now yeah and so and so it feels to me like like the core of what makes modern modern was created by time spiral block more than any that the, basically any other any other single set and and that influence obviously is is true of a lot of magic but because it circles so much such such a higher percentage of what modern is and and then influence some of the most important moments of modern history being modern masters modern horizons and even just like some of the cards tarmogoyf is like one of the most influential cards in modern history like modern history like there's just yeah. like sets oh, yeah. there like it like maybe ravnica original ravnica is up there maybe zendikar because of fetch lands right and maybe mirrodin like those are the only other ones that i would say are and I guess Innistrad. I think those would be like my top five most influential sets of modern. I think Time Spiral Block beats all of the other ones. I want to get when when we get back to regular life and we can see each other in person again. Yeah, I know it's taxing because it's a lot of time and that's just the nature of it. But I would like to put aside a night a week to draft and I want to draft old sets. I want to I want to just do throwback drafts. I want to buy a box of like of Innistrad and I want to just draft Innistrad or I want to buy like I just want to get players together and just do throwback drafts. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah. I would like to do I that. I think once a week is going to be uh, aggressive for me to do consistently, <laughs> especially convincing my wife after we do the podcast once a week and we do uh, a live stream the, commander the, once a week that stream. I wouldn't want to get rid of. Now, maybe we can once in a while do live drafts if we could ever figure out how to make that work. But I don't know how we... I don't have that technology. I, I could maybe figure that out. I have like four webcams now. I could maybe strap together a draft cam situation. We'd have to be very know. specific. Um, it'd be boring in the beginning. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it'll, I'm, I'm down to do more drafts, though. <laughs> uh, I just miss in-person stuff, and I have nostalgia for these old sets. I want to draft Innistrad. I want to draft all the sets you're talking about. I have, I, have, I, want to do. I, like, uh, I think I have two ultimate... Ma I, I have one ultimate master's box left. I have two modern horizon boxes i have four on on hint or unstable boxes like i have a bunch yeah, of you want you want you want heavy on those like well the draft format's amazing it's and the lands were worth it i just have never yeah, opened them great. i also got wrecked to have i told you this story of how i bought a box i, I bought a case of unstable because i was just like that hyped and then uh the the usp the u.s postal service lost it and then, but the store was like dragging their feet, being like, no, we're not going to reimburse you. We're not going to give you. And it was like the first time I'd ever bought a case. And I was like, I didn't get this. Can you just send me a new case? And by the time they just reimbursed me, uh, cases no longer existed. The, 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 uh. the set had sold out so much. So like, I like eventually I like spent that exact same money instead of having six boxes. I had three <laughs> oh, bitter to brutal. this day. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like Time Sparrow Bach, like is such a beloved set. I'm I'm super hyped for this set. I'm excited to draft it. I'm excited to play it. I'm excited to get old border cards. Uh I'm so glad Wizards is playing around with cool borders for stuff. I like I love the god alternate frames. I'm like a sucker. I'm like the exact target demographic for like cool borders that are sweet. I'm hyped. I'm hyped for all of the like the Strixhaven cards, which we haven't even talked about Strixhaven on this podcast, but we'll, we'll talk about that uh, uh, next week. Um, Cause I have a lot, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, yeah. I'm hyped. 
this Friday, uh, we'll be releasing kind of a whole breakdown on our Strix, Strixhaven thoughts. Uh, we're, we're doing the preview for this, and then and then Friday, we'll do Strixhaven um, first looks. And then probably the following week, we'll do like a time spiral review and go through all the cool cards and, and talk about that then. Um, but uh, also, for people that are listening, we will be doing a... Um, live stream game uh ben versus me he's going to be playing uh all of the cards we previewed today in one deck pack to the titan uh dead and gone montessori swiss spear i will personally be playing um a bunch of different modern decks probably jund and blue white (laughs) because i have them built um and we'll we'll be jamming some games and uh, that'll be super sweet so definitely check that out three o'clock today um, and, and if you missed the stream and you're listening to this tomorrow, uh, those will be living as a VOD on, on, on our, on our YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash the MM cast or twitch.tv slash cast Wiley will be live streaming to both. Um, and, and jamming some modern, some live paper modern, which hopefully you all enjoy. And then, uh, make sure to follow if you're on the channel, we'd love to hear what time spiral card you're most excited about. Or what's your favorite time spiral card of all time? I want to see that in the comments right now. Also, please like and subscribe. I do all the content creator things. It's really, really helpful. If you please, please do like. It does help all the algorithms. Thing. Thank you, anyone who came here and was watching for the first time. Um, and make sure to check out Monday night streams. Every Monday we do we do commander content. And then check out our patron. We do. There is literally a 40 minute piece of content released currently on our patreon that was the beginning of this episode that was released exclusively there where we talk about muppets and star wars and all this really cool stuff and i highly recommend it um and it's five dollars a month to get access to that section um and it really helps make the podcast happen and uh thank you to all of y'all for watching and thank you for wizards for the free preview thank you to wizards for the free preview you guys are awesome we really appreciate that Mm -hmm. Uh, did you just say pre preview because i think you did no it sounded like you did Comment below. Are you, to say, are you trying to sage this moment? Mm, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> sizing the day. Uh, carpe diem. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you uh, like every day. We release some content here all the time. Thanks so much. This has been a production of Time Traveler Media, sending podcasts into the future.